Our second speaker tonight is Kiko Mores, who is from the um, London Basque Solidarity Campaign. Thank you. Thank you. Right, very briefly, um, thank you for inviting me. Um, I feel like talking to a friend in the audience. Um, I also think that many of you know about Basque Country. Um, I think this is very interesting and I please use, it, use this pamphlet with other people who may not know as much as you already know about the Basque Country. This is the, the main thing, the main purpose of this, of this uh, piece of work. Uh, very briefly, the, the Basque Country shares with me other three cases that there is a few people who are denied the self-determination right. And we also are experiencing a long-lasting conflict. And, and we have been affected by the war on terror, especially denying any attempt to do any attempts <coughs> or to any political settlement to settle the conflict by peaceful means. And I think the war, the war on terror has, has a great impact on any political activity. And that's why there is a pamphlet about the Basque Country, uh, which we try to summarize in very few words, a uh, long conflict and a long history. So it was a difficult task, and I think it makes sense. But I will invite you that if you have any doubt, to get in touch with, with us. And either if you have legal questions or political questions, we will be happy to put you in touch with people who know a lot or who are working in the Basque Country or with political representatives, because that's what we do. We are a lobbying organization. Um, so there are many common things to Basque Country with, with the rest, mainly that we don't have the right to self-determination, and that's really at the core of the conflict in there. There are lots of things happening now. Um, there is a, an accord to basically continue the struggle by peaceful means, accepting the Mitchell principle. This is happening in the, in the last five months. This, the political landscape in Basque Country is changing a lot. But what is not changing is the attitude of the Spanish government. They just keep in denial. Sooner or later, we'll have, I, we hope they will have to move. And they will have to recognize that things are changing fast. But so far, it is a problem. And I think that the war, the war on terror is having a great influence in making governments irresponsive to any, any search of a democratic and peaceful solution. And, and, and that's what I think the main impact of the war on terror is. Obviously, there are differences between Basque Country and the other communities. To start with, there is no diaspora of Basque people in UK. So there is no much to ban, because there are few of us, and I suspect the intelligence folk will probably know very well who we are and where we are. And since there is little activity, there is little point on banning us. And as well, the Basque Country is in the European Union. And that creates a completely different political landscape because it's quite difficult to talk to politicians or academics and tell them, look, this is the state repression that we are suffering. And that's because it's a member of the EU. How come? And, but the fact is that the statistics are there. There is systematic use of torture by the Spanish government. And it's happening right now. People are being detained for being political activists. No connection to it whatsoever. And at the end of the day, what it is, is a denial. The Spanish government, so far in the last 50 years of conflict, has never tackled the problem by trying to reach a negotiated settlement. It has never been in their agenda. And I think this is the important thing to, to achieve. And that's what we're lobbying for. Um, obviously, the, the UK has a role to play because it's a partner in the European Union and we like the, to, to basically lobby different political forces in the UK to take a more proactive view of 
for a resolution in the past conflict. And also, because the European is a European member, there are a few cases of extraditions for individual members that might be living in the UK. And basically what happens is the UK does not need to ban Batasuna. Just the Spanish government bans any political organization in Spain, and they can have a euro order, a extradition order, where the case is very difficult to fight. We just, we have the lawyers from, from Limber and Pils who won lately a case, but those cases are not won on the justice or the strength of, of the case. It's, it's they normally won the cases based on technicalities. Because the matter of the fact is that if you have a euro or an extradition order in Europe, it's very difficult to find. And this is a minor thing in terms of the young thing of all the things that are happening at the moment. But I think it's an interesting point that at least in the UK, two extradition cases have been rejected. And I think it's being influenced by the work that lots of people campaigning for democracy. And I think there is a political influence. And I think it's a clear outcome of lots of people like you campaigning for justice and democracy. So I'm here to give you thanks. Um, thank you very much. Thanks, Kiko. And that's um, a very critical point in terms of we're seeing amongst um, a range of different communities connected to self-determination struggle, the use of extradition orders, Interpol red notices, which are increasingly uh, coming under challenge um, in the EU, but also tend to be a law unto themselves.